If you 3D print, you've probably heard of fuzzy skin. Well, today we aim to master it with tips, tricks, and even how to apply it to top surfaces. First seen in Cura, fuzzy skin has been around for a while now in most slices. And while most people might consider it a novelty, fuzzy skin can actually do amazing things when pushed to its limits. That's coming up, but first we start at the beginning. The obvious place to start is by answering the question, what is fuzzy skin? Normally on 3D prints, the outside walls are as flat and smooth as the printer can make them. So now let's compare another cube that was printed with fuzzy skin turned on. The skin is, as you might expect, fuzzy but the important thing to understand is that this is a slicer setting and the exact same SDL was used. So now let's cover how do we activate fuzzy skin. And in Cura, the first slicer to implement it, it's under experimental, where we'll see a button to tick for fuzzy skin. There's more parameters here, which we'll explore shortly, but for now, let's just slice. We can see that our outside wall is now fuzzy. And if we look closer at the G-code preview, we can see it's only the outer layer that this is applied to. We can get more control by ticking fuzzy skin outside only. And now when we re-slice, we can see that this internal perimeter remains smooth. What about in other slices? In Prusa Slicer and Super Slicer, we need to come up to print settings and then make sure we're in layers and perimeters. Scroll down and we'll have a section called fuzzy skin experimental. To activate it, we change it from none to one of these two other options. In Bamboo Studio and Orca Slicer, we instead find it in the other section specifically underneath the heading special mode. Where to activate it, we once again change the dropdown from none to one of the other options. But what do these actually mean? Here's a simple test model with a hole going through the model vertically as well as horizontal. We can see when we have this set to contour, it does the whole way through the horizontal hole, but ignores the vertical. But when we change this to contour and hole and then re-slice, all of a sudden we have fuzzy skin on the internal hole as well. Orca Slicer has this option for all walls, I can't really see how this differs, but I'm sure someone will let me know in the comments if they have the answer. The next settings we have are very similar between the different slices, and they're called fuzzy skin point distance and fuzzy skin thickness. Cura also has fuzzy skin thickness and fuzzy skin point distance, with the latter being tied to an interrelated setting called fuzzy skin density. Let's use a simple top view diagram to explain. The point distance goes along the outside of the perimeter, and will set the length of each fuzzy portion, whereas the thickness extends outwards from the perimeter and the value you choose here will dictate by how much. One quick thing here to understand is that the application of these two values are randomized. If we zoom in on the preview, we can see that these values are adhered to, but their location on each perimeter is randomized, thus giving the print texture rather than a repeating pattern. So let's play with these two settings and see the effect. Here's a quick print with the default Orca Slicer values, a point width of 0.8 and a thickness of 0.3. I would consider this quite a rough texture, both visually and to touch. Traditionally, I like to use fuzzy skin with quite small values on each, something like 0.2 millimeters. And as we can see on the preview, the texture is a lot finer this way. And in real life, it looks that way as well. This is a much more subtle texture than the default values. If we put the two together side by side, I hope the difference become a lot more apparent. Let's try exaggerating this by putting in a large value We'll get a small error and then the value will be reduced to the maximum. In Orca Slicer, that's a point distance of 5 millimeters, and we'll match that with 0.1 for very subtle thickness. And we can see already in the preview that this changes things dramatically. The printed piece shows a lot more horizontal pattern. It's much more subtle and doesn't look like something you would grip. Again, comparing this side by side with the default values shows the variation we can achieve by playing with these numbers. So how about that in reverse? Let's do a very small point distance, but then do the maximum thickness where allowed, which comes down to one millimeter. As we can see, the fuzzy skin is very aggressive now to the point of coming through the two outer walls and into the interior of the shape. And if we zoom in, we can see this much clearer. This aggressive texture can be problematic when it comes to 3D printing. The overlapping of the fuzzy skin with the normal perimeters firstly caused a layer shift and then knocked the entire object free. But if you can get it to stick, this will give you the most aggressive texture by far, which we can see when comparing with the default values. The take home here is that we can tweak these parameters to suit various applications. Fuzzy skin's pretty novel, but what if we want more control over where exactly it's applied? 
we can achieve exactly that by using modifiers. And we'll start by leaving our base setting of fuzzy skin to off. Now we'll right click on the model, add a modifier, and for this first example, I'll just go for a cube. I'm gonna overlap it with just part of the model, and then with it selected, come to others and turn on fuzzy skin. We'll get the same settings as before, so let's slice and see how that works. As we can see in the preview, fuzzy skin is only applied to the areas where the cube overlapped. In this case, it's not ideal that the cube went through the top of the object, as this section will probably have a pretty weak bond. Let's now achieve the same thing in Cura, and once again, our default setting is to have fuzzy skin turned off. We'll then import our cube as a separate STL, position it so it overlaps, and then come over on the side to per model settings. Making sure the cube is selected, we want to go to the third option, modify settings for overlaps. By default, you won't see fuzzy skin here, so we need to click select settings, type fuzzy in the filter, and tick everything we want to change, which for us is all of them. Now we'll be able to turn it on, change the settings if we wish, and our final thing we need to modify is to switch from infill mesh only to cutting mesh. Now when we slice, we'll once again have fuzzy skin only where the cube overlapped the rest of the original model. Let's turn our attention to a more practical example. Even with more complex geometry, we can achieve quite a lot by manipulating simple modifiers, in this case a rectangular prism. By lining it up perfectly, we can add texture to this grip. This example is in Super Slicer and it works exactly as we've seen in Orca Slicer. We tell the slicer we want to modify fuzzy skin, followed by entering the exact fuzzy skin parameters that we want for this application. Once again, once we slice, the grip is now textured in the places where the hand will hold, but not for the rest of the model. Of course, there's nothing to stop us from making in our CAD a model that closer fits the contour that we want. We export our modifier as a separate STL and then select load when importing it, and most of the time, the position should automatically go to exactly where you modeled it. We apply our fuzzy skin settings as before, and we are rewarded with a fantastic result. Just remember how hard this would be to model in CAD and how huge the file size would be. Using selective fuzzy skin, we get quite an effective result for minimal input. All very useful, but now let's try some things the slicer did not intend. And the first of those is combining fuzzy skin with spiral vase mode. And in Prusa Slicer and Derivatives, this works amazingly well. Unfortunately for Cura, I couldn't get it to work as the fuzzy skin was only applied on the very lower layers where there was a solid layer in line. I had my reservations as to whether this would actually work considering the layers aren't properly stacked on top of each other. In fact, in the preview, we can see gaps the whole way through. So would this vase be strong and would the print even complete? The answer to both of those questions was a resounding yes. I started with this tiny one that seemed just as strong as a regular vase print and then scaled up the starting cylinder and printed successfully once again. Finally, I increased the thickness to make the pattern more aggressive and that still worked just fine as well. Despite the fact that you can see through the outside in several places, none of these tests felt particularly fragile. I then thought I'd better print a proper vase design just to make sure I hadn't missed anything, selecting this model called Vase by Dan. And once again, it printed flawlessly with the added texture of vase mode, adding quite a lot visually without any obvious reduction in strength. So combining vase mode and fuzzy skin already has some visual distinction. But what excites me more is the opportunity to use those openings as a way to diffuse or emit light. Here we have a red LED torch inside one of the proof of concept prints and we have a pretty good two color effect. So far, all of our prints have had the same limitation. So let's massively step things up by adding texture to the top surfaces to match. Recently, I made a guide video with various tips on how to reduce layer lines. And as you can see from the thumbnail, fuzzy skin was one of them. The trouble for me though, is that from the side, Fuzzy Skin did a great job of hiding the layer lines, but you could still see the individual extrusions on the top solid flat layers. Lots of people suggested ironing to get rid of this, but I didn't want it to be smoother, I wanted it to match. Then I received this lovely email from viewer Matt, giving me recommendations for achieving a Fuzzy Skin-like effect on top surfaces with some specific slicer settings. This turned out to be excellent advice, so thank you very much Matt, and here we go. We've already seen with the cube that this absolutely works, but how exactly is it achieved? The first thing to understand is that there's no preset like ironing to apply this automatically to the top surface. Instead, we need specific control of two main parameters. The first is a lot of options for top infill pattern, and the second is specific control of the flow rate only for the top surfaces. Both of these are in Bamboo Studio and Orca Slicer, 
but Prusa Slicer is no good because we can't adjust flow only for the top layer, whereas Cura has this, but lacks sufficient options for top infill pattern. Matt's suggestion was to massively over extrude the top surfaces with a flow ratio of 170% or 1.7, and then select a different top infill pattern, his suggestion being Archimedean chords. When we slice the model, the top doesn't look any different at all, but that's because the slicer doesn't understand how we're manipulating it. Let's use some simple diagrams to explain what we're about to see. Let's zoom in and extrude some plastic, which the slicer precisely controls to achieve the desired line width. For solid infill, there'll be a number of extrusions side by side with a little bit of overlap. That melts them all together and gives a pretty smooth top surface, but without ironing, you still will see the low points between the individual extrusions. The first part of Matt's technique is to massively over extrude, so instead of a neat blob, the plastic oozes up and around the nozzle higher than it should. As the top surface continues, there's going to be more and more of these lumpy bits extending above where the surface would normally be, but thanks to the different infill pattern that limits the length of the extrusions, as new extrusions are laid down, the tip of the nozzle is going to scrape through the plastic and leave a pattern behind except for the very last extrusions where the full width of the nozzle will leave a slightly wider gap. Here is my first test print using the exact settings that Matt recommended. The effect here is subtle, but we have kind of a 3D Fibonacci sequence. It's nice, but it doesn't exactly look like fuzzy skin, so I started experimenting. Next, selecting Octogram Spiral. This one is also interesting, but in a different way. It looks kind of like a snowflake, and when we flip it to its side, we can see it's quite three-dimensional on top. Still not exactly what I was after, so now I came to Hilbert Curve. And the key here is that no matter how large the top surface, the infill will be divided into these tiny little straight moves. And with this change, we instantly get a result that's much closer in texture to fuzzy skin. And if we turn the disc sideways, we can see that the top texture extends up off the surface like we want. Behind the swells, there's still a bit of a grid pattern, so maybe we can tune that out next. The first thing I tried was further increasing the top surface flow rate to the maximum of 200%. This change was fairly subtle, but we can see the ridges of plastic that extend around the nozzle are a little bit thicker and more prominent. I also experimented with the top surface line width, lowering this down to 0.3 to get the infill pattern spaced more closely together, and putting it up to 0.5 and eventually 0.6 to see how it looked spaced further apart. This didn't have anywhere near as much effect as I expected, you can see a difference between the three, but it's pretty subtle and I wouldn't really recommend playing with this. I then took my layer line testing model from the last video and started experimenting with the top surface texture and then the parameters for regular fuzzy skin, trying to get them to match. And it didn't take too long until I had a pretty good candidate. Here are my key parameters. A top surface flow ratio of 170%, Hilbert curve top surface pattern, a fuzzy skin point distance of 0.5 and a thickness of 0.5 as well. And finally, an important one, we need to enable only one wall on top surfaces. This gives our top texture a chance of going the whole way to the edge versus seeing some normal perimeters to break it up without this enabled. So a test model that we want to look fuzzy all over, this teddy bear by Nathan3D. To me, this was a revelation. It's fuzzy quite evenly the entire way around. That includes the top of the ears, the top of the head, and even the top of the feet. I think my wife expressed it best when she said, is that 3D printed? Wow, that's your best 3D print apart from the resin ones. So thanks very much, Matt, for creating this technique. Let's finish by quickly summarizing the pros and cons of using fuzzy skin. For me, the biggest strength of fuzzy skin is the ability to modify the print by adding texture without any knowledge of CAD being required. It will work on any 3D printer for any user. And this is particularly powerful if you use modifiers to apply fuzzy skin and only add texture to parts of the model where it's best suited. Fuzzy skin is also an excellent technique for hiding 3D printer layer lines, particularly when combined with Matt's method of adding texture to the upper surfaces too. And for more adventurous people, using fuzzy skin opens up some interesting possibilities. The first major downside is how much longer prints with fuzzy skin take. All those small jittery movements will just never be as fast as a clean extrusion around the perimeter of your object. For example, this vase when printed normally would take just over two hours, but the fuzzy skin version jumps up to five and a quarter. Our other major problem is that we're decreasing the dimensional accuracy of the part. Consider this simple test piece designed to have a snug fit. Now let's compare a version printed with fuzzy skin. As we know, we've added thickness to the external perimeters, so the parts no longer fit. 
Even if we remove the texture from the internal cutout, the external fuzzy skin on the smaller part still prevents it from fitting. So to make sure fuzzy skin parts fit, you would need to shrink the exterior walls by the thickness of the fuzzy skin you intend to apply. This of course can be done, but now it's no longer an option that doesn't require CAD. I really enjoyed pushing fuzzy skin beyond its regular use, and I'm really thankful for Matt for making that possible. He and his wife have a store on Etsy, and I've linked it in the description, so please check it out. If you've got any other fuzzy skin tips, please leave them in the comments section so we can make this resource as complete as possible. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy fuzzy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.